you know, you talk in the book about your first sort of real professional job it wasn't even really an acting job. Oh. It was. It was the Barbie job. Yes, it was sort of going to trade shows and modeling mm -hmm. as a real life Barbie. Which talk about the uh, but Sam the gender. It. But Sam, <laughs> Zach, yeah, I know it's insane. But also GI Joes were there too. Just FYI. okay. Mm -hmm. So there were men. Fair enough. But yeah, I had like like nine to fifteen pages of text that I would have to recite to the buyers, the toy buyers that would come in, and I would have to do it in the Barbie voice. What is the Barbie voice? Well, I think I just did a version, like a heightened version of my own voice, you know, where I would just do like a higher doll voice. Right. But you're giving like statistics on like, Mattel projects 4% growth in all markets between Asia and, you know, like whatever, you're just like nonsensical and yeah. bullshit, but you're dressed like a Barbie. And you're speaking to like, Business guys in suits from all that, that yeah from like, all over the world. Some some of them like didn't speak English. They were toy buyers, but like from like huge corporations to small. At this point, you know Amazon, the box thing hadn't like happened, right? right, right. So you know people had toy stores everywhere, right? And so all these people would descend upon New York City once a year. It was kind of wild. It was wild. Such a weird thing, but it also was incredible because I got paid a lot of money when yeah. I was a teenager and that was so dope. Well, you describe this thing in your book where after doing mm -hmm. this job, you had to come back and go back to high mm -hmm. school. And it was like you had glimpsed what you're supposed the to be future. doing with your life. Yeah. And I related to that so much. This idea that you know what you have to do, but then you have to sit there and wait. And you had a vice principal at that point tell you mm -hmm. that you were never going to be an actress. Yeah, and, 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 that it's not a viable career, that I right. should look at something else, and that, you know, really to g just get my head out of the gutter or whatever. Yeah, it was wild. I was curious what gave you the confidence to think you could do it on the highest level. Because I thought I was just incredibly talented and deserving. Like, I felt like it was meant, and that it was like, it's. it sounds, I mean, it, as a true grown up now, maybe, I think I'm a grown up. Um, it sounds crazy when I think back on it, but I really just had this belief in my core that I was just destined to do this thing and it was just going to happen for me. And I was going to, and this is, I mean, but this is also how my life works, right? I was convinced that I would go to Loyola Marymount University for college and my mom had always said, well, my mom had said when I was in high school and I said, I want to just move to LA afterwards and be an actress. And she said, no, that's not, you're not allowed to do that. You need a core foundation. I need you to get through at least two years of college. And sure enough, I got Freaks and Geeks second semester of my sophomore year and I never went back. So I did two years of college and then I was on television. Hey folks, thanks for watching. If you like what you just saw, then why not subscribe? Click right here for lots more off camera. And if you want to see the hour long version of these conversations, I'm going to give you the secret link. Here it is, offcamera.com. Check it out. <laughs>